Mr. President, it's been almost six years since the disastrous collapse of the infamous for-profit college chain ITT Tech. At that time, ITT Tech was one of the largest chains of for-profit colleges in the country. 130 campuses spread over 38 states and 40,000 students enrolled. It closed its campuses two weeks after the Federal Department of Education barred the parent company from enrolling any more students using federal aid dollars. I've come to this floor countless times to talk about the deceptive, predatory, desperate tactics of the for-profit college industry at large. At the peak of its profitability, 2000 to 2003, it was the hottest sector on Wall Street. Publicly traded shares in for-profit colleges rose 460%, according to one analysis. In 2010, these for-profit colleges swept up more than $32 billion in federal student aid dollars. Hundreds of millions more flowed in through the GI Bill. For IT Tech, the total haul in federal dollars that, that year reached $1.1 billion. Six years later, the whole ITT house, Tech House of Cards collapsed in a cloud of scandal, leaving students and taxpayers holding the bag. Now, a new report reveals disturbing facts about ITT Tech, their deception, their high-pressure recruiting tactics, and other forms of fraud and abuse and they use to rack up massive profits. The report's entitled Dreams Destroyed, How ITT Technical Institute Defrauded a Generation of American Students. What makes this new report particularly damning is that the details of these abuses came not only from defrauded students, but from the company's own recruiters and top executives. Like the internal company memos that finally shed light on the inner workings of the tobacco industry, the ITT records reveal a damning prioritization of profit over everything else. Two years before ITT Tech's collapse, the country's disgraced CEO, Kevin Modaney, wrote in an email to his marketing chief, I do not have anything more important on my agenda. Recruitment is my personal top priority. Prospective students were lied to, bombarded with high pressure tactics to get them to enroll and sign up for more and more and more student loans. One former IT tech recruiter compared the working conditions to a sweatshop where all that mattered was hitting a quota. Appallingly, recruiters were instructed to use the pain funnel, they called it, a set of eight questions designed to reveal every prospective student's vulnerabilities. By identifying a student's pain points, such as working at a dead-end job or feeling unappreciated, recruiters were trained to exploit that pain and present ITT as the solution to this poor child's problems. ITT Tech then inflated grades, falsified attendance record to keep students enrolled so they could squeeze more federal dollars and more student debt for the kids. The company routinely falsely filed financial aid forms, including stealing student passwords, signing financial aid forms without the student's knowledge or consent. The list goes on and on. The result, Madani, the ITT shareholders, made millions. Taxpayers got ripped off. Students ended up holding the bag with worthless diplomas if they finished, but a mountain of student debt whether they finished or not. What did Muldaney think about the students he was defrauding? Look at his words. This is the man who was the executive who was doing this to these children. He said, take off the gloves with the student, slug back, do not hold back in any way in anything that we can put out there to question the legitimacy of his complaint, we should most definitely do so. We need to call him out publicly. That's the kind of respect they had for these students. And many of these kids, as the majority leader knows, were first generation college students. Their mothers and fathers were so proud that they were at ITT Tech College. They made it into college. Mom and dad thought they'd have to work extra hours, but it would be worth it. It was a fraud from start to finish, a fraud on American taxpayers and a terrible fraud on these students and their families. Mr. President, I see that the majority leader's on the floor here, and I have a few more pages that I'm going to put into the record on this subject. I have been talking about for-profit colleges for a number of years. Luckily, we have a president and a secretary of education who are putting watchmen in place, guardians of students in place, 
who believe that it's more important that kids are treated fairly and honestly than it is for some executive to make millions of dollars off of an abuse of the system. And I ask consent the rest of my statement be entered into the record. Out of objection. I yield the floor.